All things new. All things new. Revelation 21, 5, Matthew 19, 28. This video is uh, going out to Patrick. Um, Patrick asked me a powerful question yesterday, and it, it had been going through my heart and mind uh, during the day as well. Patrick said, how should we live as Christians, people saved by grace, called to righteousness, right? But anticipating the Lord's return. The Bible even refers to our speeding the Lord's return. So, so if we're saved by God and we're called to live holy lives, right? It says in first, uh, uh, second Peter 3, 11, called to live holy lives, but we're anticipating the Lord's return. And, you know, in my own life, th there was something about that equation that almost, um, got me a little bit down because again, in second Peter 3, 10 and 11, it speaks of the Lord's return um, being a, an all-consuming fire, the, the, the heavens to be destroyed with a roar, the elements burned up. And uh, I remember as a young boy, um, kind of thinking of this destruction, the end of the world. And, and in some senses, it knocked a little bit of heart out of, out of living life. Because if it's all going to be burned up, um, you know, shouldn't we just kind of get in the fetal position and, and, and just bear with life and get to the end? We can't in, really enjoy anything in life. But, you know, listen, there's something deep, deep, deep here that we need to understand. Uh, God is going to come. But, but the way Jesus uh, kind of framed his coming and, and our, um, as it were, dying and resurrecting to heaven... Jesus framed it in this picture of renewing all things. I think of Ezekiel 38 when the dry bones are called back to life. So we need to really hear and access the Spirit of God. How do we do life? Well, we do it in the Spirit of Jesus, in step with Him, Galatians 5.25. Um, and the Spirit of Jesus was a Spirit that delighted in life. He didn't dismiss this, this side of glory and go, look, it doesn't really matter. Just bear down. A better day is coming. He didn't. He, he cast our eyes to heaven. He gave us visions of heaven. Revelation 21, 1 to 5. 22, 1 to 5. He tells us in, in Matthew 6 to not live and invest our hearts in the mortal, but to, to store up our treasure in heaven, right? But but Jesus was the one who modeled a delight in this life. He said, you have to be like children. Matthew 18, 3, Matthew 18, 10, Mark 9, 45, Mark 10, 14 to 15. Jesus said, you've got to be like children. In fact, if you're not like children, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven. Children delight in the moment. They delight in what is here in life. 1 Timothy 4, 4 to 5, everything God created is good. Nothing is to be rejected, it says. I think of Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Ezekiel 36, uh, uh, no, 18, 4, all souls are mine. God made this world and loves this world and he's going to renew all things. Now listen, Moses in, uh, in his prayer, Psalm 90, 17, Moses was a man with his eyes on God. His eyes on Canaan, his eyes on heaven. But Moses prayed, 90, 17, Lord, establish the work of our hands. Listen, the Spirit of God is about the present. Eternal life isn't just about heaven. Eternal life is knowing God's presence, John 17, 3. Uh, I, I, it's, it's knowing Jesus Christ. That spirit of the presence of God is here and now, not just then. So it doesn't matter if, if this thing is going to come and go. Look, food comes and goes, right? Life, in a sense, is made for the moment. Uh, whether this beautiful feast, we, we don't get to depressed going, well, I'm going to eat it, and then I'm going to, you know, it's going to eventually be ashes again. I mean, there's no point in enjoying the food. No, we don't. Our, our appetite helps us overcome that, right? We're just like, no, this is about the moment. Our faith has been given to us by God to overcome that, that sense of despair in the temporal as well. Just like our appetite helps us 
enjoy food in the moment. Our faith helps us enjoy this life, even though we anticipate something consummational, something more, something where this will dissolve and and everything will be made new again. But look, if the presence of God is here in what you do here, that is the spirit of heaven. That is heaven on earth. And that's why Jesus taught us to pray. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. He didn't say, Lord, help us get through life and just hold out till, till we get to heaven. No. He said, pray, your kingdom come now. Your will be done now on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus gave us a model of not discarding earth and the temporal now, but going after the eternal and bringing it to earth now. That is a joyous kind of life. So listen, Patrick and my brothers and sisters, how do we do life now? We do it in the spirit of Jesus Christ. We, we don't separate the, the mortal and the immortal, the, the temporal and the, and, and the eternal. No, through Christ and his presence and his spirit now, we, we do heaven on earth, as it were. Um, that comes through the Spirit of God. That doesn't come just through some, some equation or some theory or philosophy. No, that comes through the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus said, John 7, 37 to 38, He who believes in me, streams of living water will flow from within him. That living water is the same water that goes from the throne of God down through heaven in, in Revelations 22, 1 to 5. Heaven is for us here and now. Now listen, how do we do this? How do we access this? I'm going to end with this. We take captive our thoughts, our thoughts of despair, our thoughts of pointlessness. We take captive our thoughts, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5, and we make them subject to Christ. And Christ is God with us, right? Emmanuel, heaven with us here and now. We take captive the mortal and we make it subject to Christ, the immortal. We make statements of faith every morning. Psalm 36, 9, Lord, in your light, we see light. Psalm 73, 25 to 26, he is my portion, the portion, the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Um, uh, These statements of faith uh, with our eyes on God, 2 Corinthians 5.16, we no longer regard anything from a worldly perspective or anyone as we once did Christ. No more. We take captive, my brothers and sisters. We take captive this and in faith, Hebrews 11.6, without faith it's impossible to please God. In faith, we lay claim to your kingdom come now. Your will be done now on earth as it is in heaven. So how do we do life now, Patrick? We do heaven on earth now through faith. Raise a voice of praise. We do heaven on earth now until the Lord comes again. God bless you, brother.